amongst the Muslim Ummah that they call themselves in different groups and names and sects. And some say that, didn't the Prophet said they will be sect? Yes, the Prophet did say that. What did the Prophet say? The Prophet said, it's mentioned in a Sahih Hadith of Sunnah Nabu Daud, volume number 5, in the book of Sunnah, chapter number 1, Hadith number 4595, the beloved Prophet said that the Jews were divided into 71 or 72 sects. The Christians were divided into 71 or 72 sects. And my ummah, my community will be divided into 73 sects. The next hadith, which is also a Sahih hadith, of Sunnah Nabu Dawud, volume number 5, in the book of Sunnah, chapter number 1, hadith number 4596, the beloved Prophet said that the people of the book were divided into 72 sects. And my ummah, my community will be divided into 73 sects. And all of them, except one, that means 72 out of 73 sects, will go to hellfire. Except one. All of them will go to hellfire except one. Those that are with the jamaah, that is the main body of the Muslims. And these two hadith are repeated several times in different books of hadith. It's also mentioned in the Sahih Hadith of Jami al Tirmidhi, volume number 5, in the book of faith, chapter number 18, hadith number 2640, where the beloved Prophet said that the Jews were divided into 71 or 72 sects. The Christians were divided in a similar way. But my community, my ummah, will be divided into 73 sects. Would be divided into 73 sects. The next hadith, which is also a Sahih hadith, of Jami Tirmidhi, volume number 5, in the book of faith, chapter number 18, hadith number 2641, the beloved Prophet ﷺ said that the Bani Israel were divided into 72 sects, but my ummah, my community will be divided into 73 sects. All will go to hell except one. And Abdullah ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, the narrator of the hadith, he asked the Prophet, which one will go to paradise? All will go to hell except one. Abdullah ibn Umar says, which one? The Prophet said, those that are there on the way of me and my companions. Those that follow my way and the ways of the companions. Here we come to know that the Prophet, he predicted there will be 73 sects. He didn't say you should make. Allah says in the Quran in several places. In Surah Imran, chapter 3, verse number 103, verse number 104, verse number 105. In Surah Shura, chapter number 42, verse number 13. In Surah Anam, chapter 6, verse 159, that don't make sex. Here the Prophet predicted, though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says not to make sex, yet my ummah would be divided into 73 sex. All will go to hell except one. The Prophet said, those that are there with the jamaah. The main body and the other, he says, those that follow me and my companions. Further, when we read, it's mentioned in the Sahih Hadith of Jami Tirmidhi, volume number 4, in the book of Fitna, book of Fitan, chapter number 7, Hadith number 2165. Abdullah ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, he narrates a Hadith and says that Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, while giving a khutbah, while giving a speech, he said that I, uh, I am amongst you as the Prophet was amongst us. And he said that stick to me and my companions and those that come after that and those that come after that. 
That means the Prophet said, stick to my companions, the Sahabas. Then the next generation, that is the Tabain. Then the next generation, that Tabe Tabain. The Prophet said, you have to hold fast to the rope of Allah and the Sahih Hadith. After the Sahih Hadith, stick to my companions. Then the next generation, then the next generation. And the Hadith continues, there will be a time when people will tell lies. And a person will even lie when he is not even asked for an oath. People will give testimony when they are not asked for testimony. And the Hadith continues. That when a man is with a woman alone, the shaitan is a partner. And the Hadith continues. If a man is alone, there are chances that the shaitan is with him. But if there are two, the shaitan is further away. Therefore, if you want to enter paradise, stick with the jama'ah. This hadith also emphasizes that if you want to go to paradise, stick with the jama'ah. The next hadith, which is also a say hadith of Jami Tirmidhi, volume number 4, in the book of Fitan, chapter number 7, hadith number 2166, the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah is, Allah's hand is on the jama'ah. The next hadith, which is also Sahih hadith of Jami Tirmidhi, volume number 4, in the book of Fitan, chapter number 7, hadith number 2167, the beloved Prophet Muhammad said that my ummah will never be united on disbelief, will never be united on something which is wrong, and the hand of Allah is on the jama'ah. That means it is compulsory that we Muslims should hold to the rope of Allah strongly. That is the glorious Quran and the authentic hadith. And we should not be divided. We should not make sects. Making sects in the religion of Islam, making divisions in the religion of Islam is prohibited. And we have many scholars who have guided us. We have many many imams, ayamahs who have guided us. And all of them told us to come close to Quran and Sunnah. And the four famous ayamahs, Abu Hanifa, may Allah have mercy on him. We have Imam Malik, may Allah have mercy on him. Imam Shafi, may Allah have mercy on him. And Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, may Allah have mercy on him. All these four ayamahs, they were great scholars. And all of them told to follow Quran and Sunnah. When you read the book of Shaykh Nasr al Albani, in the book, the Prophet prayers described, he writes on page number five in it and give references. That Imam Abu Hanifa, may Allah have mercy on him, he said that when you find a hadith which is sahih, that is my madhab. When you find a hadith which is sahih, that is my madhab. Imam Abu Hanifa, may Allah have mercy on him. He also said that when you find any of my opinion and you find that my opinion is against what is mentioned in the book of Allah or the authentic hadith of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ignore my opinion. When we read the teachings of Imam Malik, may Allah have mercy on him. He said that I am a mortal. I'm a human being. I make mistakes sometimes. I'm correct sometimes. When you find any of my opinion, you check it up. If it matches with the things of Allah and the messenger, it is correct. If it disagrees with the words of Allah and the things of the messenger, you ignore my opinion. Imam Malik, may Allah have mercy on him. He also said that the opinions of Imam Abu Hanifa, of Imam Shafi, and my opinion, I believe all these opinions are equal. But the truth is what has been said by Allah 
his messenger and the companions. That means he believes that all these opinions are equal, but we have to check it up with Allah and the hadith of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the things of the companions and then decide which is correct. And if you read the teaching of Imam Shafi, may Allah have mercy on him, amongst all history tells us that his followers of Imam Shafi, they were the strongest in following the teachings of Imam Shafi. And Imam Shafi, may Allah have mercy on him, he said, that when you find the hadith which is sahih, that is my madhab. He said, the things of the Prophet reach some people, it does not reach some people. Whenever you find any of my opinion, check it up, whether it matches with the opinion of the sayings of the Prophet. And if the Prophet's saying differs with my opinion, ignore my opinion. Imam Shafi, may Allah have mercy on him. He said several statements which meant the same. And he said that if you find my opinion which is contrary to the book of Allah and the sayings of the messenger, ignore my opinion. And he said that it is the duty of every Muslim that he should follow the messenger. And if he does not follow the sayings of the Prophet, he is in the wrong. The same was said by Imam Abid ibn Hanbal. May Allah have mercy on him. He said that if you find any of my opinion which is contrary to what Allah says in his book or what the messenger said, ignore my opinion. And and Imam Ibn Hanbal, Ahmed Ibn Hanbal, he always stressed that you have to follow Allah's book and the things of the Prophet Muhammad So what we hear and learn from all these four great imams and the other Im imams also, Imam al tawri and Auzi, all of them said that the right opinion is the opinion of Allah and his Rasul. And if any time, any of our opinion goes against the teachings of Allah and the sayings of the Prophet, you ignore our opinion. One saying that, throw the opinion on the wall. But here we find in our Muslim Ummah, we are divided on small trivial issues. And we know that mashallah, all the four great Ayamas, 95 more than 95 percent what they said is the same there may be a difference in a couple of percentage and all they must said that when you find my opinion which goes against the opinion of allah and his rasul then ignore my opinion so why should we fight amongst ourselves all these great ayamas they told us to unite on the basis of quran and say hadith Let me give you one more example. The hadith of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi that when you go for sijda, do not do what the camel does. So one group of Muslims believe that when they go into sijda, they put their knees first on the ground and then they put their hands. Another group of Muslims.